Good morning. morning. Welcome to our worship service today. Uh, Glad to see all of you and uh, hope that you uh, will continue to be a regular member of our church. I have a few announcements to make. One, uh, Pastor Kong will be leading a Bible study on the book of Mark Tuesday at 1030. April the 20th, that's this coming Tuesday, and uh, like for all of you who have the time and the opportunity to come, the United Methodist women are having their fundraiser uh, for the next uh, couple of weeks. They're going to be uh, having the Mother's Day and Father's Day uh, program that we have every year. Uh, There's a pink sheet in your bulletin. Uh, I'd like for you to Complete that and turn it into the church by next Sunday, April the 25th. Uh, and uh, on honoring and in memory of your uh, parents or whoever, then it is, uh, doesn't matter what you uh, want to give, you can do whatever you choose. Third, uh, Methodist men are going to have their barbecue again May the 7th. It will be from 11 to 7 on that day, and the tickets this year will be $10. Uh, We will not be eating in the fellowship hall. It will be a drive-through and pick-up at the uh, uh, parking lot. And Roy, would you like to make a comment concerning... uh, And they're going fast, and you're about to run out. That's good. And the next uh, announcement, uh, Sunday school is every Sunday at quarter to 10 in the fellowship hall at present. Uh, We're talking about maybe moving to a classroom. And uh, if any of you usually go to Sunday school, we'd like for you to come and join us. We have a good class. uh, We have good discussion. uh, And it's a good, uh, meaningful lesson every Sunday. Does anyone else have a, uh, an announcement? Don't forget, we're going to need a lot of pound cake to go with that barbecue. Okay, and uh, the people have been contacted uh, to cook pound cakes, correct? Yes, that's going to be the dessert, so we're going to need a lot of pound cakes. Okay, and if uh, you haven't been contacted, don't feel bad, I'm going to contact you now. Uh, feel free to make a pound cake. And we want you to uh, have them fixed, uh, you know, in the small dessert plate and uh, bring them by the church. And what time do they need to be here at church uh, the 7th? The best thing would be if you can bring them Thursday afternoon so we can get everything lined up on the first thing Friday morning. Right. Very early. Yeah, very early. All right. So we could have some going out as early as 6.30 in the morning. That's correct. Yeah. Any further announcements? Okay, thank you.
And before we have the call to worship, I did uh, not mention one thing. Uh, we have a sign-up sheet for the Bible study, and I'm going to put it right back here on the table of the bell choir. And any of you who would like to uh, go to the Bible study, feel free and would like for you to sign up. Now let's have the call to worship. <clears throat> Please stand. Come, children of God, to sing a new song. Clap your hands and shout for joy. Jesus is our obedience, our joy, and our salvation. In steadfast love and faithfulness, God has done marvelous things. God raised Jesus from the dead. God raised us alive and has worked among us. God hears our prayers and answers when we call. And that hymn is in the bulletin and also on page 577, God of grace and God of glory. confession. God of our ancestors, God of today, we come to you in the name of Jesus who lives among us, confessing that we have not been faithful to your purposes. We abide in sin, disdaining the ways of the one who came to take away our sin. We confess or aspire to follow the path loving service. Heal our brokenness, O oh God, and bring together the fragments of our scattered existence into a meaningful whole. Amen. And our word of assurance and forgiveness. As we repent and turn away from evil, our sins are blotted out. Times of refreshment come from the presence of the sovereign God, who has heard our cries. God claims us as children of the Most High and offers us a safe haven. 
Our faith makes us strong to lead others to God's healing power. Thanks be to God. Amen. And join me in the prayer of illumination. <clears throat> Empty us, great God, of all that prevents us from hearing what you want us to hear. Empty us of our preconceptions, our preoccupations, and our prejudices. Empty us that we might be filled with your spirit and your word. Empty us that we might be filled for ministry and mission. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Our scripture lesson is found in the bulletin, and it is Luke, the 24th chapter, 36b through 48. <clears throat> While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, why are you frightened, and why do you doubt, and why do you doubts rise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they, well, in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took and ate in the presence. Then he said to them, These are the words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms, must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And Millie Bruton will bring the children's sermon. Um, I'm sorry, Millie couldn't be here today, so I'm Taylor Swift, you know, the singer. I'm filling in for her today. So um, I want, this sounds like some of you don't believe that I'm Taylor Swift. Well, I guess that I'm, you know, I'm not really as young as Taylor Swift. I don't have that long blonde hair. Probably not as skinny as her, and, um, you know, I can sing, but not quite like Taylor Swift. Well, yeah, I cannot prove that I'm Taylor Swift, so I guess I'll have to just go with being Millie Bruton today. Well, you know, sometimes in our everyday lives, we have to show proof of who we are, um, and Maybe not so much for children, but as adults, we have to do that really often. But even as, as kids, when you want to play on a little league team, I'm pretty sure that when your parents go sign you up, that you have to show a birth certificate. And so um, here's a sample of a birth certificate. It's issued by the state of North Carolina, so it's official. It's got my name, who my parents were, um, all the information, the date of my birth. So that way, um, when they sign you up for Little League, they know which age group you're supposed to be in, and it's official. Um, recently, I went to see my brother in Iowa, and I flew. And so, of course, when you get on the airplane and you give them your ticket, you have to show some proof of who you are um, to get on the plane, and so I used my driver's license. And that has, that's a picture ID that shows a picture of me so that person knows that I'm, I'm the one that has the ticket. 
even when you get a driver's license, you have to provide proof. And so you would use your birth certificate again. Um, when you apply for a job, you usually have to have your driver's license and a social security card. And even if you're a child, you have probably a social security card already. If you go to the doctor, you have to have an insurance card, right? Uh, to the library, you've got to have a library card. Um, a lot of times when you go to work, you will have um, a name tag or something. And so when I worked at the bank, I had a name tag. And when I worked with Cooperative Extension, I had a name tag as well. Um, oh, and then if, I didn't say this about flying, but if you are flying out of the country, then you have to have a passport. And the passport has a picture of you. Now, that is one from way back in the dark ages. Um, and even when you go to college, I think college students have an ID. And then recently, a lot of us have been vaccinated for a COVID, and so we have all are proud to have our vaccination card for COVID. So, you know, there's lots of ways that we have to show proof of who we are or the things that we've done. Today's scripture comes from Luke, and the time is after Jesus' resurrection. The disciples were meeting together in a locked room when Jesus appeared to them. They were afraid. They thought he must be a ghost. And Jesus said to them, why are you afraid? Why do you have doubts? Uh, then what did he do? He showed them proof. He showed them his hands. They touched his flesh and they watched him eat. Ghosts cannot do all that. All along, Jesus had been saying all this would happen, um, that he would rise from the dead. He proved to the disciples who he was without a license or a name tag or a birth certificate. Then they believed the puzzle pieces came together. He told them to go tell others he was alive again, and they did spread the word all over. So what about us? We don't have the opportunity to see Jesus' nail-scarred hands or feet, but we have the words of the Bible, and we have our faith. And just like the disciples, Jesus wants us to go and tell others and to share the good news. So let us have a word of prayer. Thank you, dear God, for the gift of Jesus Christ. Give us the strength and courage to go forth and share the good news that he lives. Amen. Thank you, Sister Millie. What a wonderful children message that is. On Easter Sunday, our, one of our uh, regular attendees uh, wanted to join our church uh, family, but she uh, could not make. So today, uh, we are going to have a uh, ceremony to joining our church family member. So I'd like to invite uh, Sister Lillian Stork. Would you come from there? <clears throat> And all of you, if you will, please turn on page 34 of the hymn book. So face to me, thank you. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Thank you. Do you accept the freedom and the power God gives you to resist the evil, injustice, and the oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, 
and the promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. Thank you. According to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful member of the Christ the Holy Church and serve as a Christ representative in the world? Thank you. See, to joining church, member, uh, church and family means we have a mutual covenant. Lillian with you, with me, and all of us with the together before God. So page 35, this is your response. Do you, as a Christ body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? Amen. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and the life include uh, Lillian Stork before you now in your care? Here is a common thing that all of us bound together. This is our core value. So we will, uh, I will ask you these questions. Let's join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testament. Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of Christ. Please turn on page 38. As a member of a Christ Universal Church, Sister Lillian Stark, Will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all your power to strengthen its ministries? Thank you. Now, you are joining this church. As a member of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? Thank you. Now I'm asking you, members of the household of God, I commit Sister Lillian Stork to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase her faith, conform her hope, and perfect her in love. Let us pray. The God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and peace. In Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Now you can turn around.
faith. The authority that has been given by all of you and by the United Methodist Church of the North Carolina Annual Conference, I proclaim to you, Sister Lillian Stork. She is a church member, church family, at First United Methodist Church in Mount Gilead. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. People of God say, let us welcome her. Sister, Sister Lillian actually was a, one of the church members at my brother's church <laughs> in, in West End. And she moved into this community and she says, well, I want to continue to hold Asian pastor. So she decided to join our church. Not really, but she, she, she loves all of you and the church people. So uh, she, her uh, gift is cooking. So she can, she, she, she nourishes me, she can cook. She can bake the desserts, I just let you know. And she has a good service. That's, we, all church members who joined here in, in Zion, we had a spiritual inventory form that we went through, and that's her gift. So we, uh, she is a retiree nurse, and uh, she stays in the top of the hill there. So uh, whenever you have opportunity, I hope that you build a Christian fellowship uh, with her. God bless you. She is a good cook. <laughs> hint, hint, Emily. Let us pray. O oh Lord God, let the word of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you our rock, our redeemer. Amen. Last Sunday, Jim Kaiser, he preached the risen Christ appearing to all Jesus' disciples, including Tom, uh, Doubting Thomas in John's Gospel. In Luke the post-resurrection story is slightly different from John. In Luke, the risen Christ appeared to the woman, three women, and then Peter. In an account found only in Luke, later Jesus appeared to two disciples on their way to Emmaus. One is a Cleopas, and the other is unknown. Last book, preachers are preaching, who is unknown disciple? And they say, it's you. You are the unknown disciple. These two disciples did not recognize the risen Christ until Jesus opened the eyes as they broke the bread together in the house. In today's scripture, in Luke, it's the third post-resurrection story. The same excited two disciples shared their experience with the 11 disciples because Judas Iscariot committed suicide by hanging himself on a tree while two disciples were talking to other nine disciples, Jesus appeared to them suddenly in a physical body. Just imagine how you would respond if you were to bury a loved one only to find that person standing in your midst again, fully alive, a few days later, 
you are full of joy on one hand. On the other hand, disbelief and wonder. Yes, confusion, absolutely. The reason Christ does not blame the disciples' confusion and inability to understand as they are not sure about his resurrection. Nor does Jesus criticize their abandonment of Jesus on the way to Calvary. But with compassion and love, Jesus approaches to them with different teaching methods for the assurance of his resurrection. What are different learning styles? All of us, we have different learning styles. There are visual learners, verbal learners, physical learners, logical learners, and oral learners, and interpersonal learners, and intra intrapersonal learners. A school teacher utilizes different teaching methods for the educational effectiveness. Let's look at different teaching methods. Jesus, as a rabbi, the teacher, uses for his unconvinced disciples. To begin with, Jesus says to his disciples, Peace be with you. He uses the words which are oral learners. And then he encourages them, look at my hands and the feet, which are for visual learners. He encourages them, touch me, which is for physical learners. He asks them, do you have anything here to eat, which is for interpersonal learners. Jesus ate a piece of a broiled piece before them, which is for logical learners. He explains his life in the Bible, in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms to his disciples, which is for intrapersonal learners. Jesus who uses all different teaching methods is the best teacher for his disciples. And all these disciples, they say, yeah, we got it. Now we believe he is risen. Their faith has come to be stronger that the risen Christ is real. It is not a fabricated story. Christianity is not found on the dreams of some people's disordered mind or the visions of their unusual excited hearts, but on one who in actual historical fact embraced and fought and conquered death and rose again. Jesus is using all different methods of teaching and then he opens their eyes to understand the scripture. And he moves his disciples from weak faith to strong faith, from conscious confidence, where they have some knowledge, to unconscious confidence stage, which is the highest stage of learning. In other words, they didn't get it of his resurrection after Jesus taught them, we got it. If Jesus had not used these different teaching methods, the disciples would have been grief and sorrow, and their future would have been lost. They would have mourned for the rest of their lives. Because they gave up everything that they had, and they followed Jesus for three years. At the end of the three years, if they had only knowledge, 
that he died and never rose again. I bet they had deep scars and very regrettable memories. When Paul Lawrence Dunbar, renowned poet, died in Dayton, Ohio, his mother left his home exactly as it was on the day of his death. At the desk of this brilliant man was his final poem, handwritten on a pad. After his mother died, his friends discovered that Paul Lawrence Dunbar's last poem had been lost forever because his mother had made his room into a shrine and had not moved anything, anything. The sun had bleached the ink in which the poem was written until it was invisible. The poem was gone. If we stay in mourning, we lose so much of our life. Rather than staying in a mourning, in grief and sorrow, Jesus wants his disciples to strengthen their faith through effective and fruitful teaching methods. And sound. A theologian and a philosopher in the Middle Age wrote Proslogion, which is a Latin word, which was the prayer book. In the Proslogion, Anselm emphasized his theological position, faith seeking understanding, in proving the existence of God. In other words, we believe in order to understand, not we understand in order to believe. Have you seen some people, they say, how could Jesus die on the cross and his bleed, bleed, blood can make us clean? How he could he redeem us on the cross? I do not understand. That doesn't make sense. And I cannot believe it. Have you seen these kind of people? Everything should be right according to their reason. And they says, yeah, then I can believe it. And some was to extend the principle to clarify the relation between faith and reason. Faith is the way the believer takes in order to understand, while reason can serve as a faith's instrument. And some enhanced and extended what St. Augustine, who was the early church theologian, believed. St. Augustine says, Understanding is the reward of faith. Therefore, seek not to understand that you may believe, but believe that you may understand. Let me ask you a question. Do we understand all things that have happened in our lives? Not really. Life is full of questions and full of mysteries. But we believe our lives are the gifts from God. And we, believe, we live in faith day by day without understanding the lives completely. Likewise, all of us have not seen the crucified Jesus, nor have we been to his empty tomb. We have not touched his feet and hands. We have not seen the risen Christ. We have not been in the upper room with his disciples in Jerusalem. But some ways, somehow, by the grace of God, we believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. 
when we have a faith in Jesus Christ without seeing and touching the risen Christ, we have believed and understood the mystery of the resurrection. Our faith can be enhanced and enriched by experiencing different learning styles so that our faith can be stronger just little by little in a day by day. The question is, what are we going to do with our faith? Martin Luther says, the true living faith which the Holy Spirit instills into the heart simply cannot be idle. Our faith in Christ leads us to be a witness of the risen Christ. After Easter Sunday, Kum and I, we were on my vacation at Atlantic Beach. It was so good. As I sat down on the sand, appreciating the beauty of the breaking waves, beauty of the sun rising and the sunset. And once in a while, I said, Kong, why you wake up so early? This is your vacation. You can take it easy. But my body tuned early in the morning. So I went out in the dawn, and I saw the, the, the beauty of a breaking uh, waves. Just, it reminded me one of my best friends, David. David and I went to the beach together about 20 years ago. We threw fishing pole together, and we compete with one another who got a bigger one, who got a most of fish. And we caught lots of fish. As biting slowed down, David walked across the water and wrote down huge words, capital, A-L-L, space, M-Y, space, S-I-N-S. David, what are you doing? And he says, you see, about 10 seconds later, a huge wave came in and washed away the walls. There was no more walls on the sand, no more my sins. They were vanished because of his resurrection. No more heavy burdens of shame and guilt because of the stone of the entrance of the tomb was rolled away. Have we experienced and felt the forgiveness of all our sins in the past and the present? Do we believe even future sins are forgiven? Where do we go to share the good news? It begins from Jerusalem. Luke wrote two books. One is Gospel of Luke. The other one is the Book of Acts. Luke wants to all his readers to share Gospel of good news in Jerusalem. Book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says, you will receive the power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Witnessing is not limited to Jerusalem, but goes beyond Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the place where the disciples gather together. The message can be applied where we are right now in Mount Gilead. We become the witness of the risen Christ, 
the good news in Mount Gilead. We start in this community to share the power of a resurrection before we go anywhere else. William Booth, founder of Salvation Army, says, Faith and the walks should travel side by side, step answering to step, like the legs of a man walking. First, faith, and then walks, and then faith again, and then walks again, until they can scarcely dis distinguish which is the one and which is the other. By sharing good news, by doing good works, our faith can be stronger. The strong, strong faith can lead us to do more works, and the good works lead us to have stronger faith until we enter into the ark of a full salvation by His grace. The disciples are not left to live forever in the upper room. Like Peter, James, and John was not allowed to stay on the mountaintop. The risen Christ urges them and us to move, to go to every house in Jerusalem, every house in Mount Gilead, and finally, to go into the world. After the upper room becomes the worldwide mission of the church, the days of sorrow are past, the, and the tidings of joy must be taken to all humanity. Before they, before they felt they were defeated and afraid, but now, they have become resilient, bold, and courageous. Before the appearance, their faith was fragile and unstable. But now, they stood on the solid ground of faith. Before Christ appeared to them, they had been seeking for understanding only. But now, they are strongly convinced that Jesus is risen. Before they had hidden in the upper room, but now they went out and preached publicly on a street corner in Jerusalem. What about us? Some have strong faith and have a lot of knowledge of the Bible, while others have a weak faith and do not know about the Bible. But all of us have a faith in Christ. Our faith seeks for understanding of God and the God's power in Jesus Christ. As we hold our faith, which seeks for understanding, which is a proslogion, can we go out on the street in Mount Gilead or visit our neighbors and share the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ so that we may have a strong faith? Yes. Our faith seeks for understanding, and faith produces good works, which makes faith stronger. Therefore, let us seek for understanding of God and God's love, by having faith, let us produce good works. And let us have a stronger faith today, tomorrow, and forever. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, sometimes... We are doubting like Thomas. Sometimes we feel that 
we do not have a strong faith. But you love us so much and we have a faith in you. Let our faith may grow day by day in your grace as we seek for understanding of almighty power. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. God's word has been proclaimed and it is our response to God's words what we are going to do with the word. The one of the ways that we can respond to God's word is that we offer ourselves and our offerings to God. So let us pray. We give thanks, gracious God, for the joy of giving our gifts and ourselves. May others find the refreshments and the wholeness through our sharing. In Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. As we continue to worship our living and loving God, we have some celebration and the prayer concerns uh, that we need to share with one another. Well, first of all, I give thanks to God for Brother Jim Kaiser who uh, preached the last Sunday. And also, I give thanks to God uh, for our men's breakfast. We had over 20 men were there this morning. So, uh, if you would like to join uh, our men's group every third Sunday in the morning at 7.30, you are invited to come and join us. We continue to pray for the people, those who are affected by COVID, their families, friends, and the medical workers, and uh, uh, researchers, and also government authorities. We lift them up in our prayers as well. We lift up Jimmy F. Uh, Efford in our prayers, and we give thanks to God, Luena Dorset, for her good recovery and she is waiting for full recovery as well. We lift up people, those who lost a loved one uh, since I came here, so remember them in your prayers. We uh, thank God for Matt Crumb's uh, speedy recovery, and we lift up Donna Martin and Joe, and continue to remember uh, these people in your prayers. Marietta Andrews, Joe Parsons, Colleen Peters, Hoy Manning, Jean Ann, Betty Oliver, Kathy Paul, Marsha Russell, Susan Harris, Alma, and Lola, Carol Holly, Sarah Beth, Mark Bennett, and Jim Lefter. Also this morning, uh, Jackie Brown was taken to hospital, uh, emergency room, so remember him in your prayers. Is there any other celebration or prayer concerns that you want to share with others? Uh, Brian, did you raise up your hand? Oh, okay. Anyone else? All right. Anyone else? Let us pray. O holy and righteous God, who nourishes all creation with your light and makes joyful all that lives on earth and in the heaven, we confess our sins before you, where you offer the light we have chased after darkness. When you offer peace, we have created confusion. While you offer the hope, and we cling to false God of vanity and pride. Forgive us, O God, and restore us that we might again bask in the warmth of your presence. Help us to claim 
in the power of Christ's resurrection in our lives day by day. Power to love, power to forgive, power to overcome sin and live in your righteousness. Satisfy our restless hearts by bringing them to rest in the fullness of your love. We ask it in the most powerful, the most beautiful, and the most wonderful name of the resurrected one, Jesus Christ, who taught his disciples how to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand and join me, our closing hymn, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. Please stand. Let us pray. My beloved sisters and brothers in Christ, may God who gives your hope will keep you joy and full of peace as you believe in him. May you overflow with the hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit.
The people of God say, Amen. Thank you. 